Flight crew members will now be required to wear personal protective equipment, PPE, and observe infection prevention and control IPC measures for the duration of their flights. They would also be required to undergo mandatory COVID-19 tests every fortnight at the expense of their employers. This is part of the mandatory COVID-19 protocols approved by the Federal Ministry of Health for the aviation industry as the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA, prepares to gradually ease the lockdown on its operations on June 7. NCAA Director General Captain Musa Nuhu stated this at a virtual event organized by the Aviation Safety Roundtable Initiative titled COVID-19. According to Nuhu, who sent letters to airline operators, airports and other service providers, these new protocols override existing practices where the international flight crew members are quarantined for 14 days upon their return to Nigeria. In addition, the airlines must also conduct orientation and sensitization of their crews on infection, prevention and control IPC measures, in addition to having adequate stock of PPE, minimum 70% alcohol-based hand sanitizers and universal precaution kits on board every aircraft. Joining us now is Captain Chris Najomo. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning to you. What, what's um, your take on all the guidelines uh, given? Is it too stringent or fair in the circumstances that we have? No, it's not. Uh, it's not uh, stringent because um, what um, the NCA has done is um, quite doable and uh, has, um, they've sent circulars to all the airlines and um, all the airlines, especially my airline, Aricare, has uh, put in place uh, what the NCA wants us to do and um, we've gone through training and retrainings and um, it's a different total con new concept but um, it's good it's good for um, safety of the crew and safety of the passengers so um, the um, guidelines and uh, procedures that we are meant to follow will all follow it because NCA has said that if um, uh, we're good to go if you're ready to, for operation they will come and audit every airline and make sure that all the things that uh, supposed to be put in place is in place so the, so that this brings assurance to all the passengers cool. what are the specifics of this rule that uh, concerns you really because what we know is that when somebody is suspected to have a case you're yeah. supposed to be 14 days in isolation now this is being reduced to make it have more of testing yeah. as against that quarantine that what, what worries you about this particular arrangement Yes, um, the only thing I see here is, I must tell you, um, as a crew member and as a pilot, for a passenger to come through screening, through, through checking in, he must have been screened. Through security, he must have been screened. And before he gets into the airplane, he must have been screened. So we, what we have been told and we have been trained is that uh, when we get a, a, a COVID case or a suspected case on board, the cabin crew has been trained to put on their PPE gears and isolate such passengers case or cases at the rear of the cabin, at the rear of the aircraft. And um, captain in command is informed and um, we will ad now advise the control tower shortly before we land to advise that uh, medics should be on arrival. So trainings have been done and if this is done, um, the, 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 what my company is doing is if there's a sus suspected case on board, that group, that group will be put down on flight and will go through a test. So okay. we're all prepared for it. But, but, but one, one of the concerns that has been raised as well is the fact that the, some of these aircraft that we have are pretty small. Yeah. So how are we going to, when somebody is suspected to have a case, where are you going to take the person to, really? You said at the back of the plane. What, yes. How is that going to work? Or yes. is there a possibility that you will keep those little planes and use the big ones no, for no. now? No, um, no. For now, the arrangements that every airline is doing, like my airline, I can only speak about my airline, Eric Air, is that, uh, let me take typically a 737. The 737 is big enough and has like um, over 140 seats. So we have designated like the last three seats at the back of the aircraft will not be sold out. Will be like um, a place designated for any case. And however, when we start operation, you won't be having full loads because of course, everything will have... Um, yeah, that yeah. is so, so those seats have been designed to say, okay, if there's a suspected case, the cabin crew is meant to move such suspected passengers to those seats 
and isolate them and let the captain in command know. And then with all this one, they have special gears they're going to put on, you know, and, um, um, and, and, and take care of it as soon as um, we advise the control tower, the medics will be waiting on arrival. Okay. Now let's look at how you've been coping. Yes. Um, I mean, you, the entire airline has been shot down yeah. for months now. How have you managed to stay relevant, uh, to stay informed so you don't lose some of the soft skills that you need? Absolutely. Um, thank you. In our company, um, the training department puts in place uh, what we call the palaces. This palaces is whereby we go through our courses, we go through our systems, uh, you know, with our laptop and computers at home. So we are continually um, uh, given things to do um, to make sure that we stay abreast with um, what is happening, uh, what we're supposed to do. There are so many courses we're supposed to do, uh, dangerous goods, CRM, you know, um, so many other courses that, we're, that we've been doing. So it has really kept us abreast. And training department has told us, make sure you finish all these courses so that, because it's all part and part of requirement NCA wants us to have before we get, get a bond. And um, there comes also the 90 days. If you have not flown for 90 days, you're required to do a base check, three takers on landing. NCA must see to that. So there's a lot that will be done and will be done and will be carried out. So a lot of safety measures have been put in place. Absolutely. A lot of, you know, post-COVID-19 yes, going so. forward, do you see some of these measures being sustained as a regular practice? Or the, there's a likelihood that after we're done with the virus, uh, some of these measures will be relaxed? No, I don't think so. Because um, it, 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 it will all go down into the books. I don't think it will relax because it will all go down because this pandemic can come back. You know, so it will be a norm because once the NCA has issued the guidelines, we'll follow it. So it will be a norm from thence on and we will carry it as um, everyday affair, everyday things that we do. So I, I, I don't think it will relax. I don't think that will uh, make us relax, you know. So I, I see us continue. Now, give you an example. Um, we have been told now in my bag as a, as, as, as a pilot, I must have um, my own personal headset. I used to have the general headset, but I have to have my own personal headset. I have to have gloves. I have to have face mask. I have to have uh, wipes. And I have to have a sanitizer. All in my flight bag. Now, uh, another measures that we've put in place, we have to avoid contact with people, so everything is done by email. You know, instead, when we resume, we go on to our, our control center to sign in papers. All that has been uh, sidelined now. Everything will be done to you so that we, we do not get in contact There's with people no that contact. much. So, so that's what my company has put in place. Let's look forward to a safer um, flight across Nigeria. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for coming on the news. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right.